Landing the desired spot on Shark Tank is the chance of a lifetime for a growing entrepreneur. Part of what makes Shark Tank great is the unscripted, real-life quality that no longer exists in most reality television. As a result, most fans know that none of the entrepreneurs who pitch their businesses are actors, and the famous sharks really do invest their own money. But more often than not, an investor appears on an episode of the hit reality series for a free advertisement that puts a relatively unknown company in front of millions of potential customers. Or its product soon turns out to be a complete scam. Today, we're listing five Shark Tank deals that went off the rails. Did you have faith in these when you first saw them, or did you know they would fail from the start? Let us know in the comments. Nikki Pope appeared on the Shark Tank in 2011, hoping to get an investment from one of the sharks to be able to grow her toy renting service called Toy Guru. The company called itself the Netflix of toys, and allowed customers to rent toys for each month. Since kids indeed get tired of their toys pretty quickly today, the business seemed like a good idea. Parents can pick a subscription plan that involves the number of toys they fancy, and when their children grow bored with their toys, they can switch them for new ones. But if it turns out a youngster loves a specific toy, they might buy it. Nikki says that first, parents register on the website and pay a monthly charge ranging from $35 to $89. Then, the family prepares a wish list of toys that are delivered to them on a planned agenda. When a child becomes dissatisfied with or outgrows a toy, it's returned in the given prepaid package. Each toy is sanitized and sanitized again before being protected for cleanliness and assigned to the next family. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary decided to invest $200,000 for 35%. However, within a year, Toy Guru stopped taking orders, suspended their social media, then filed for bankruptcy. In the end, Cuban lost every cent of his investment, and there was never a reason given for the company's failure. The company posted on their website that they won't be taking new customers due to tremendous growth before filing. The company officially closed in 2016. When Forbes asked the show's investors what their worst deal was, both Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary called out Toy Guru, stating that it was a great concept, but they proved unable to execute. Icon is an invention that was created by firefighters, as it represents a connector that fastens a hose to a fire hydrant quicker and more efficiently than the old conventional method. There was so much hope for this product, since it could save lives by shaving precious seconds off the process. If a home or business catches fire, every second counts when it comes to putting out that fire. During the firefighting process, one of the things that takes the longest is connecting the water hose to the fire hydrant. With Hycon, the firefighter can attach the hose to a hydrant in less than 3 seconds and connect it to the hydrant with no threading or wrenching. Not only is it quick and simple, but it's also safe. When the men pitched the deal, Mark Cuban was pretty impressed, so he decided to invest $1.25 million into the Hycon company. But the deal ended up going south. It turned out the product had some issues with the licensing and with the agreements with Mark Cuban as he attempted to change the deal with the product founders. The deal that was previously agreed upon ended up falling through, making this one of the worst settlements to come out of the show. One of the firefighters announced on Facebook that the investor's ego affected the negotiations and that when it came down to signing the deal, Mark wanted to license out the design of the Quick Connect hose attachment. The social media pages for this company have not been touched since 2015 and it appears the company couldn't make it on its own. Charles Michael Yim was the first ever entrepreneur to get the Shark Tank sweep and partner with all five sharks. He was also the first winner of a $1 million deal for his product called Breathometer. His invention was a device that acted as a portable breathalyzer and it could be plugged into the audio jack of a smartphone. The device gives a reading of the blood alcohol level with feedback and lets the user know if they could lawfully operate a motor vehicle. But while the idea sounded great, the business ran into a lot of problems after the deal. It turned out that they had trouble fulfilling all the orders they were receiving. But an even greater problem was the fact that the breathometer was considerably less accurate than warranted, occasionally recording low blood alcohol readings when it was actually risky to drive. The company tried to fix the problem by updating the app to overestimate results, but the FTC got involved and ordered Breathometer to make full refunds to all of its customers. Since they couldn't solve the problem, they decided to discontinue the device. When asked about it, Mark Cuban called the product the worst execution in the history of the show and blamed the founder for misspending the capital. A West Palm Beach police officer developed the Kate app after a colleague got divorced because his wife saw text messages between him and his mistress. Neil Desai then partnered with his sister to purchase the application from Imler, acquiring over 10,000 subscribers shortly after and appearing on the Shark Tank. The app helps people being unfaithful in their relationships wipe their phones, making sure their spouses can't read their secretive messages. The acronym Kate in the name Kate app stands for Call and Text Eraser. 
That said, the Kate app is essentially software that allows smartphone users to hide calls and text messages on their device. All the device holder had to do was input the names and numbers they'd liked kept hidden. The founder of Kate app claims he didn't set out to sell a cheater's app, but marketing for the app includes the word mistress and advertises tools to block calls and text so your spouse doesn't see them. Even though it was strange that a product like this entered the show, Sharks, Kevin O'Leary, and Damon John teamed up to invest $70,000 for a 35% stake in it. However, it looks like it didn't go too far. The latest update from the company's Twitter account is from 2013. Since then, there have been no news articles about it, and the website's down. Shelly Eller has two sons. One day, she struggled to change both of her sons at the same time while swimming in the pool, and she came up with an idea to create her product called Show No Towels. Kelly crossed a towel with a poncho and got a patent for her creation you can use as a shawl and bath towel at the same time. She licensed it out to Legoland and Six Flags Magic Mountain, and then went on the show where she asked for $50,000 and managed to strike a deal with Lori Grainer. But right from the start, the relationship between Shelly and Lori also took a hit. According to Shelly, Lori warned her not to cash the check the next day, and later on tried to change the terms of the deal. Shelly's ultimate goal was to sell her towels to Disney water parks, but after lackluster online sales and a profit margin that failed to meet Disney's expectations, the deal fell apart after many months of trying to move it forward. Her deal with Franco Manufacturing also fell apart. The failure of both deals and the tension between the two women led to the dissolution of the business. Eventually, Lori kicked her to the curb and after six years, the business ended. Kelly even wrote on her blog that she had once cursed her Shark Tank partner. But now she thanked her as she had taught her much more than she thought she had. Although none of that was about business. Since the show's conclusion, Lori Grainer has remained very inactive in Shono, while Shelly has continued to grow her business despite this. Sometimes when you attach to something and it doesn't work out the way you do, we end up disappointed. Yeah. You know? And, um, you know, what I know to be true is that there really aren't any mistakes. I don't think that there are any mistakes. I really don't believe that. Be sure to comment down below and let us know if we've missed something. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching.